There we are. It looks like things are working. That's always a pleasant surprise. Uh, welcome to Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons with our continuing saga of Submarine Wednesday or Subwed. Um, yeah. So here it is, Wednesday, and I'm going to be hopefully making some significant progress today. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, I will do a flip. I want to show you what we're doing first, what I'm doing. I keep talking in plurals. I should stop that. Um, as you know, for the last several thousand years, I've been working on all of these little detail pieces the bunk deck and the gyro deck and the most recently control deck with the officer's quarters here and then uh, the mess deck which was actually done a long time ago but you know hasn't been assembled yet and this is getting really close to the point where all of these pieces can be put into the hull of the submarine and then I can move on. And if you had tuned in last Wednesday, um, I found the pieces for the missile deck. And part of what I'll be doing today is prepping those pieces so that they can be primed and then uh, painting started because that's relaxing painting. I have to say that this bit is not going to be very relaxing. All of these pieces fit into the hull. I've test fit them before, but after they're painted and glued together, they don't always fit the same way they did. So um, I really don't know how this is going to go. I'm hoping that it goes together pretty smoothly and that I can get this done and move on. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, and I'll be showing you the hull into which all of this goes in a little while. But there are a couple of bits that need to be painted yet. Um, this deck goes on top of this deck like that. That's how it goes into the submarine. And it, hopefully if it fits together, it fits together. Um, but when you're looking at it from the side like this, you can see the bottom of the deck above and so i wanted to prep that and i need to paint it so i will be doing some painting on basically the ceiling of this deck which is the bottom of this deck um, it all is painted the same color which is this it's called light blue it's the color of the bulkheads uh, here and that needs to be done and it'll probably need two coats uh, before it can go in. So I'll be, you know, somehow or other uh, holding this up and painting this whole thing. I filled in the gaps, you know, where all of the stuff got cemented in and sanded it down. And it's not perfect, but it'll do. Uh, it looks better than it did before. Um, I, it will look better than it did before I did all of that. But I, I didn't uh, bother you all with uh, 10 or 15 minutes of basically sanding. These, which are a real pain in the butt, as it turned out, because they all had to be modified, are um, the tubes for the periscopes and radio antenna. And the periscope has these little, like, handles and viewing ports and stuff on them. And I need to make those... I'm going to make those black, and I'm going to use a fine felt-tipped pen. Yeah, I have the camera up pretty high because I'm, what I'm doing today is not so much detail, but I anyway, when all these parts go together, you're going to want to kind of see it. So I need to uh, get those out, get that pen out and do that. And this will dry. And while this is drying before the second coat, um, I'll probably start preparing, prepping, meaning cleaning up the pieces to uh, the next section. Uh, depending on how that goes, I might actually take two breaks today, one fairly early on. This is really bright. I'm not sure why that is, at least on my monitor. 
Um, I might take two breaks today uh, so that I can, if I get some parts cleaned up, I can prime them. And if the priming dries, I can actually get to start painting some of the pieces for the next section of the submarine yet today or else things will go badly and I will just cry in despair. I don't know. I'm anxious about this. You know, it was one thing getting all these detailed things painted and cemented into place. It's another getting them into the hull. And so far that hasn't been as simple and straightforward as I remember it when I was a kid. Anyway, it's uh, time for the flip. And I'm going to use this little piece of balsa wood with a marker on one side and nothing on the other. And I'll flip this. Dot. Two dots. Two to one. Okay. It had, it had to be, it couldn't be even. You know, you couldn't have one and a half, one and a half. So 50-50 chance. So with, with three, that wasn't going to happen. Well, let's do some more and see what happens. Now it's two to two. Three to two. Four to two. Okay. Yep. Not exactly uh, it perfectly random. Um, I'm going to get the first coat of this blue paint on. I'm going to start by doing that because if I need a second coat, then this will be drying while I do other things. So I'm going to, I guess, just put one of these down. And there's an opening for the staircase here, and that needs to stay that kind of beigey color. And so I'm going to have to tape that up. I have done that before. Bits of tape. And, uh, yeah, probably wouldn't hurt to have a scissors. The tweezers. I don't know. This could end up taking the rest of the day, probably, the way things sometimes go. Um, yeah, I don't have the tools I need. Here we are. Scissors of sort that may work. We'll see. This is the kind of thing I probably could have done, but I didn't off camera. But you get to watch it instead. Yeah, if this uh, work with the tweezers continues to go like it is now, since some of the stuff I need to do when I put the submarine together, when I put these pieces together, is going to have to be done with tweezers. Uh, yeah, it might be. Anyway, uh, do one's best. schedule has been really erratic i know we've got um i've had travel that has taken me away from this we had a huge power outage that went down for like four days because of the storms that hit what was it i can't even remember like a week and a half ago now Not only out of power, but the um, there was no internet, so there couldn't be any streaming. And for a day or so, there wasn't even cell phone service, so we couldn't even let people know about anything. Eventually, we got cell phone service back, 
and was, were able to kind of a hot spot for essential internet work. But it was very slow and limited in capacity. So that meant that we lost a Friday and a Monday. And then uh, we had Submarine Wednesday. Actually, last week wasn't too bad. We got a Submarine Wednesday in. And um, on Friday, I actually started doing some a minifig because this is, after all, Dice and Dungeons, which is a Dungeons and Dragons thing, right? So I started to work on, on some sort of flying demon thing. And then here in the States, Monday was kind of one of the major holidays. Major in that it is a huge travel day. Not, I mean, the Monday isn't the, well, Monday was the travel day, but there's like, um, a three or four day weekend, depending on when people took off. And it's kind of traditionally the last, last vacation weekend of the year. It's when people have like motor homes, I guess in, in Britain, they're called caravans, right? If people had those, or if they had a, some people have a, like a vacation home cottage. Usually it's a smaller home, but it's a place where, where you get to go to be away from the city. People can get one on a lake, um, but, but weekend is everybody goes up in their motor homes and everything else to have one last, one last summer event. Decision was made not to stream on Monday because everybody would be stuck in a gigantic traffic jam trying to get their motor home or their boat or their jet ski or whatever, um, whatever they had in the country. being away from the city kind of activity, whatever they had. And I made that a little too small. Oops. Everybody leaves their home like on Thursday night and the roads are just totally packed. Thursday, and if they can't get away, they try to leave work early on Friday, and if they can't get away, Friday evening. So it's a little spread out on the way up to the place. It's almost always up. People go north for that kind of thing. The roads are on the, really packed, but like I said, it's kind of spread out on the way up in that People are leaving anywhere between um, maybe even Wednesday night and Friday evening. And everybody comes back on the holiday itself on Monday because they need to go to work on Tuesday. Because they're very lucky and have accumulated enough time off to wait a day, which would be something they would like to do because... If everybody, the background music is off, lovely. And I thought things were working. Now I just uh, just made it too small again. Well, let me push a button and see what happens. Getting is a warning sign. Um, it says it's supposed to be working.
It's like a software update that we missed. Well, here it was, getting all thrilled by the likelihood that everything was working today. So Wednesday, and then it turns out that, in fact, the background music is not working. Okay, well, I have to get to that in a little bit. In the meantime, I am making my third attempt at getting a piece of tape that is the right size to fill in the stairwell here. Get to watch me put little pieces of tape in a little bitty space like this. That's, that's what happens when you make models. As you spend a good deal of time doing these little bitty things. Hoping that the paint doesn't leak down into the stairwell. And if it does, then there's a touch up that needs to be done. And then, um, whether it leaks or not, there's still the. You start assembling this thing and uh, forget to take the tape off. It gets put together. And, you have to kind of take things apart. So one thing about the assembly for this is that there's it's there's not much cementing involved. The pieces themselves kind of just hold themselves together. At least that's how it worked when I was doing the test fitting. And that means that although it's cumbersome and sometimes it scrapes paint and there needs to be touch up and stuff. Um, what it does mean is that if things don't go well, they can go be done again. Okay, they can be redone without having to break apart and, you know, try to repair things that have been cemented. So let's see. There are some really touchy little bits to this. There's, um, on some of the decks, Like below this one, there are these staircases that I have not cemented in because they need to line up from one deck to the next. And as I discovered, things don't always line up very well. So I, here's one of them, and I'll show you it just to digress a little bit. You know, so there's this fancy little staircase. I'll hold it up so you can see it, and this little peg goes in this little hole, you know. And it's not enough really to hold it. And I'm, I don't, I'm not going to use model cement on that because if it doesn't line up, I'll need to move it around. And so I'm going to use contact cement, which I found holds pretty well, but gives me a little bit more movement than I would usually, than I would get with model cement. And it doesn't mar the surface quite as much. It doesn't dissolve the paint and things and make quite a, quite as big a mess. And then there's another one on the deck above this that this this thing here I've been taping up is the exit to the stairwell from below. And then there's this weird tiny bench on a pedestal. Yeah, I've cemented these other chairs in. This one isn't cemented in. This is the chair that's used by the periscope operator and that's supposed to go here but um i'm not i didn't cement this in like where the tubes because lining those up is going to be a real trick and then this is going to go in after those tubes are put in somehow i'm going to get that you know cemented on uh, but I can't be sure that the height or the location of that little hole is going to work. So we'll see. We'll see what kind of work I can, what kind of stuff I can do with tweezers later today. And these tubes that I showed you before, these things, these go here. And they're supposed to be, originally they were designed to go like in this place. but. Um, if you put it there, it doesn't line up with the, the periscopes, actually. 
so they go more like here and here and here. So I'm going to use, I might even use rubber cement for these because I can't put these in until this is inserted into the submarine itself. And I need to take tweezers, push them in and slide them along the slot until they line up with the uh, periscope or the um, radio antenna above. up this need to be held in place partially by partially by the um scope that slides down into them like that toothpick does Anyway, uh, that's part of what needs to be done, and hopefully it will it will work. Hopefully all these pieces will go into place without fighting back too terribly much. Okay. Um, well, there we go. Time to do some relaxing painting. I need to have something. To, you know, I'm going to see if I can fix the background music here. It's a little digression while I try to do something that may or may not work. I'm going to restart. Song. There and restart the program that's supposed to play the music. Hmm. Okay, the program says it's playing. It is. Ah, I did something. I think I should I should really just stop now. I should just stop the entire uh, um, doing anything and just let you listen to the music because it's working. And well, I probably can paint this. I don't think I can, I don't think I'll destroy anything by painting the bottom of this, which is the ceiling of the uh, deck above. And it does need to be painted, uh, definitely needs to be painted because it shows pretty significantly. So let's just do that. Let me do that. And um, I want to put this piece. This little bit here that will be uh, just little bits of these little protuberances will be highlighted in black a little later, but <clears throat> let's do some relaxing painting. What I need, what I really need is a substitute painter. This is pretty good. I managed to go, I'm going to go an entire half hour. And I'm getting back to uh, normal here. Uh, I'm going to go an entire half hour without having done any painting or actually doing anything other than putting a little bit of tape on it.
you know, we're getting some subsidiary rattling from the vortex mixer here. Because there's something loose somewhere. Over to my right. Getting some nice, nice vibrations. Okay, well, there's that. I'm doing this, I'm going to be using um, a pretty large brush because I want to minimize, I want to get a thin layer on here, I think, and definitely want to minimize uh, the appearance of brush strokes. So, okay. That's the best, you know, I'm going to get started. Start putting paint on. edge because if I start at the edge then there will be a blob of paint okay it starts to dry and then it doesn't level so I'm just I'm just going to try to keep the brush stroking to a minimum here And put on a second coat to even it out. Now I'm just, this is just making a mess. This is going very badly. All I'm doing is putting paint on a big flat surface and I'm leaving just, it's just all scabby and everything. I don't know. Okay, this that was bad. This whole thing was bad. Bad, bad, bad. I'm going to wipe it off before it sets up. Um, I got impatient. Okay. And what I needed to do was just say one thin layer, make sure there aren't any brush strokes on it. Don't paint over it because it, it looks like what happens is um, this is drying really quickly. And so when I came back and tried to do a little touch-up on it, um, yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't be. If you talk about what you're doing, um, or what, what what I what you might be doing, but don't really ever get around to doing it, you do have the uh, there's the opportunity then to not get anything done. Okay, well, at least you know this is water-based paint. This was just. Don't do this. This was just very poor, poorly done. All I needed to do was spread paint on a flat surface, right? Um, no. That dry off a little bit. I don't know how I managed to do that. Almost painting. It was almost painting, and then what you got to do, you all got to see unpainting. All got to see unpainting with Dyson Dungeons. Thanks for your commentary, Who? That's really helpful. Um, you know, maybe I should thin this a little bit. If I thin it, though, it's likely to... Mm. 
that up and try even faster. And the problem was that when I brushed over the paint, it started to pick it up off the surface. We're just, I'm just going to do like little single thin layers of paint and then do multiple coats. Instead of doing it all at once. And hopefully, hopefully that will work. Anyway, yeah, it, I mean, why not? And then, um, then I get to do the same painting basically when I, by doing multiple coats. I get to do relax the same relaxing painting just over and over again. There, it's mostly blue. Okay. And it looks like, uh, you know, the paint is, hopefully the paint will level. No, no, don't touch it there. No, we'll see how that goes. That'll take a while. It'll dry, it'll level out, and then I'll uh, put a second coat on it. Not terribly even, but I don't think it's awful. Okay, uh, let's do the, the periscope thing. I'm going to clean this brush and then I'm going to put head magnifiers on. There, there was paint. Paint went onto a surface. Um, part of it is really pretty good. Part of it was, you know, not as thin as I would like, but. I've learned that this paint, and hopefully it will stay the same, levels itself pretty nicely, even though it doesn't look like it when it's wet. I'm going to need these head magnifiers so I can see up close. Since I attempt to. I haven't used these in a while. Let's see how this is. If I get closer to the camera, it gets bigger. You can see these little these protuberances. Those are the things I'm going to highlight with this pen. Side here. These are the handles you use to make the periscope come down and turn it.
We can't do really fine detail work like this without going silent. Like, like the submarine, the silent service. I could go on. I could talk about that. This is an example of essentially not being able to walk and chew gum at the same time. It's the same thing when I can't do little pokey things with a felt tip pen. Same time. So when this is then uh, put into the submarine, hopefully later today, maybe it'll actually work. Um, those those bits will show. Like it's part you know, that you can see that it's a periscope. I really do need to get some down the side here, though. At least give the impression. Sorry. I have to say that for some reason, the head magnifiers are giving me a little bit of nausea today. <laughs> well. Get, get the ink on there, but not get it up to the tube. If it gets onto the tube, it would really sh very, it would really look bad. So this is a yeah. That was actually the bottom. Huh. Yep, I have it upside down.
Okay. Okay. Yeah, it slipped. But just enough so that I'm going to have to touch that up. Trying to get the ink across the top here, and it's not an even surface. And so I'm getting it, yeah, I did what I should, what I was trying not to do, and I managed to uh, very much do it. So I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to have to get out the, um, the bone white and a tiny little brush. And I'll touch this up on the bottom at the same time and do a uh, touch up where I just a tiny, uh, just, it was like that, don't do that, don't do that kind of thing. And then I did, and then it, uh, it's the problem. So, anyway, little bits of paint a little later, and hopefully I'll be able to fix that. This is almost dry. Almost ready for a second coat. And I don't want to get too impatient because if I put the paint on this ink, it'll just spread the ink around. I need to just dot paint onto it. <clears throat> you know that show, Down Periscope? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think it can be, actually. That would be an anachronism, wouldn't it? Because that was uh, like a World War II submarine. It was a diesel electric, and this is an atomic submarine. But there were a lot of submarine TV shows and movies as I was growing up. Got to be real familiar with the... Uh, at least the movie version or the TV version of the, the dive, dive command. Everybody said dive, dive. It's like, okay, what else could we possibly be doing? And then there was this klaxon that was going out. It was an auga sound. I mean, a real auga, auga. You know, which meant everybody on the on the submarine could hear it, of course, but. It was not exactly running silent with that klaxon going off and everybody yelling, dive, dive. And then, then people got to, like these ladders, they just slid down the ladders and spun the hatch closed. And there was always water pouring in the hatch. I don't think, I think they actually closed the hatch before they, they dove deep enough for the water to be coming down. But it was dramatic to have a little drip of water all around the hatch as the hatch closed. Must have been very damp inside the submarine after they went dive dive because of the water leaking in. Um, yeah. So there's run silent, run deep. I don't know. Do you, are you familiar with all of these movies? Can you look them up? You have internet connection. You can look up all sorts of submarine stuff. Two submarine stuff while I mix this paint and put on a second coat. Oh, well, Hunt for Red October, yeah. That was a really good submarine one. That, uh... But it didn't involve anything getting blown up or anything. There were no, no torpedoes were launched. Well, I guess there were, weren't they? But they missed. Oh, they, yeah. They actually did blow up one of the submarines, one of the Russian uh, attack submarines. No, uh, Hunt for Red October, Das Boot, the German one. Das Boot was a really good uh, submarine movie, uh, a real classic. That should be a classic. Didn't get spotted at all, so I'm just going to put a little paint on them. And then uh, here's another coat.
there are, I mean, some of the real classic submarine things. Submarine going through a minefield. That was always a good one. You know, where the submarine would catch a cable and you could hear it grinding against the hull of the submarine you know, as the mine was pulled closer and closer to the sub. And um, they had to know just when to back off. That kind of thing, that was always pretty good. A second coat will be enough for that. That's good. Now I'm going to try to fix the periscope. The down periscope or the up periscope or the periscope. I'm going to try to fix it. And I'm hoping I don't have to like strip off the paint off and start all over again. Yeah, submarines going through minefields were always a really, that was always an amazing thing. Um, there was one, the entire conning tower got torn off of the submarine, which could happen. Uh, the way these things are built, you know, the World War II submarines look kind of like boat-like, but that's just a hull that's built around a pressure hull. And the pressure hull is actually a cylinder, you know, just a tube to withstand the pressure because that's the best shape for that. And <clears throat> the rest of it... The, when you go under, it just gets kind of flooded all around because it would collapse with the, the pressure of the water. And the conning tower was actually a second tube, a small tube that, you know, I mean, the same diameter but much shorter that was attached to the larger tube. And then a fairing went around it, you know, to make it uh, sort of streamlined. And then, of course, there was the famous hatch, watertight hatches that go between them. So you'd have this evaporate or whatever. Um, I can demonstrate that, and it's kind of interesting. So you'd have, you know, this longer tube like that, that would be the submarine, and then there would be a smaller one that would go on top of it, and that would be the whole command conning tower. So it was possible that if the hatches were, you know, intact and closed, that you could have the conning tower torn off. You couldn't go there anymore, of course, because, you know, it would be torn off, but Yeah, the, the rest of the submarine would would stay intact because the the pressure hull, the tube for the pressure hull, the main submarine would still be there. That, that's a sub, that's a submarine thing. If you watch, you know, old submarine movies, there's always, there's, there's certain tropes in all of these old submarine movies. One is uh, that when you, when you dive, you know, dive, dive, you slide down the, the ladders and you close the hatch behind you, there's always water that kind of spurts and drips um, out of the, or around the hatch as you go down. Whether or not that ever really happened. Probably not. Any dots of this color of paint to cover up the mistakes I made when I was trying to just be unsuccessful. So trying to be unsuccessful. Successful at being unsuccessful. Did a fine job. A swell job. 
Let me talk. Let's talk 1960s and 50s stuff. I did a swell job being unsuccessful. No. I managed to do there is get a little dot of this color. That's a pretty easy fix, though. I should be able to fix that quite easily. But it means waiting for this paint to dry and then um, reapplying the black. And I don't want to go, I don't want to get into one of these going back and forth endless times trying to get it right. So I'm going to fix that spot and just say, yep. Good enough. Yeah, this is why, why I take so long to get anything done because I have to do everything four times over instead of just once. Okay. Um, I have, I can't really do any assembly of the submarine until this thoroughly dries. And that's, this is going to take a while, so I'm going to set this aside. This has to dry, and then I have a dot. I have to fix a spot, a dot, with black, hopefully not getting it into a place I don't want it. And what I'm going to do next, then... Oh, yeah, submarine movie tropes. Is... The, uh... They always get depth charged, this, these World War II submarine things. They drop depth charges and everybody shakes and the lights flash. And then um, the lights all go out and then the emergency lights come on, which look a lot like the original lights, but, you know, they just come back on somehow. There's a backup set of lighting. But the, the other thing that happens is pipes always rupture and water starts spewing out and then people have to run around and turn valves off to stop the water so there's a lot of valve turning and that always made me wonder is why are there all these pipes full of pressurized water running all through the submarine anyway mm -hmm. I mean, why, why is that there? Um, I mean, other than being in a movie so that when a depth charge goes off, it looks like there's some sort of damage and people have to run around and fix it by turning off valves so the water starts stops spewing out of these pipes. But again, why is there all these, oh, why are there all these pipes full of pressurized water to begin with? And if they have a purpose, you know, if there's some reason why you had these pipes full of pressurized water that could be turned off with valves after you get depth charged. Um, what doesn't work that should be working when you shut the valves off? That is, you know, the submarine was running and the well valves were open, right? So if the valves were open, there should have been some reason why the valves were open, some functional reason within the, uh, within the submarine, one would think. And so you turn them off, and all that happens is the water stops gushing. So it's like the only purpose to have these pipes full of pressurized water was um, to make it look like something was happening when the depth charges went off while you were making it. No, that wasn't that interesting, was it? But it was one of the tropes. I'm getting parts. Be back with parts. What I have here is a huge pile of parts that go into the next section of the submarine. And these pile of parts um, all have various flaws on them. 
either because of the way they were molded or just because of the way they had to come off. So for example, when I cut, I want to make this come down just a little closer. Yeah, while I'm doing this. When I took this off of the tree, I cut it away so that there's plastic remaining on the piece. And the reason for that was that if I just broke it off, I might get like a indentation there. Okay. Um, so these, these are different late levels of decks that, um, hold the submarine tubes. This one, this one, I believe, goes on the very bottom. Okay, and then let me show you one of the tubes. This is a special tube. These are small parts. What happens is these tubes are come in halves that need to be cemented together, preferably in the right orientation. Okay. And when they're cemented together, they then to this deck like that. And then this goes over them. <laughs> so there's uh, excess plastic in the way. Anyway, uh, once that's cleaned up, this goes through and then it attaches to the top. And these bits here are all supposedly the tops of the submarine tubes. And somehow or other, each of these will have to be painted yellow and in in, in the edges will have to be just like perfectly round. So that's going to be a trick. Um, this deck is the least warped of the ones I found. You can see that it's got a bow in it and somehow I need to unbow that. Okay. But what I'd like to do is um, clean up these parts and get some of them primed. And if I can prime them, then I can start painting them. And I'm just doing this while I'm waiting for that blue paint to dry. That has to be done. These tubes are going to have a challenge of their own. These need to be cemented together first. All right. Um, and then depending on how well they line up, like the seam is not too bad. The, I, I want the seams to not show when they're painted. And so what I'll, probably need to do is depending on how the cement settles on all of these things is I might need to fill in the seams with some of that plastic putty and sand it down. So there's 15 of these and then one special one, this one, this special one becomes, see there's a slot on it. This becomes spring-loaded. There's a little spring and a lever that goes into this. This one goes on here, like that. That's one of the special things about it. And of course, it doesn't fit in there. No, of course not. It's flush to the bottom, but it's, you know, I force it, it kind of goes in. Uh, there's a lever there, and it's spring-loaded and a little missile little missile goes in the tube and if everything is lined up correctly all the way up to the top it actually goes through the top of this okay uh, like that and the missile shoots up maybe an inch or two I mean it's not a very powerful spring but the, the missile will shoot up and that's why I've got this tube separate from the rest of the tubes because it needs special attention and that blue paint is not still dry, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is um, get some files out and some sandpaper and get some of these things prepped. Oh man, there, knock it over, paint side down. 
I'm gonna get some of these things prepared. I don't think it's good. The bulkheads and these and the small bits here. Um, the tubes don't get primed until after they've been cemented together and prepared by being sanded down. So the seams don't show. But these things I can. And they'll need to be primed on both sides, most of them. But there are a few pieces that if I take an earlier break, like around, it's already 11, maybe 11.15 or 11.30, if I get these prepared in time, um, I can prime them. These things on both sides, I could prime them on one side. But some of these, like these smaller bits, um, I can prime them and actually start painting them a little bit later. These bulkheads have a lot of detail on one side and not much on the other. Um, those need to be primed on both sides. This is primed just on one side. So some of these things, I might, depending on how assembly goes, which might take, it might go quickly, or I might get done real quickly, and then I can go on and do some painting. Um, or it just might be a disaster and take forever. Maybe even more than one stream. I don't know. Um, the bottom of this, I need to get some sandpaper because once this, this goes into the hull and you can see underneath it, so it needs to be painted on the bottom, it has these circles on it and those need to come off because those will show and look stupid. I'm going to leave these here, just say that's structural. Um, but the, the ones that are in the front here, those will definitely show. And these need these need to come off. These bigger ones, I don't know, just just not going to. The submarine movie tropes. Mainly, a lot of it mainly had to do with water spilling, right? Like water splashing down the hatch when they closed it, because that was a dramatic thing. For the actors, it might have been kind of tricky, because they were coming down this ladder, and then, you know, I'm sure it wasn't very high. So if they fell, there were soft surfaces for them to bounce off of and stuff. But nonetheless, it was just this metal ladder, and it... Uh, probably got slippery and they all got wet and I can't be comfortable I mean maybe they heated the water so it wasn't too uncomfortable who knows who knows what they really did and the other trope was you know the depth charge damage was always pipes bursting and water shooting out of pipes that could be turned off with valves which implied that the water was in the pipes all along, doing something, who knows what. Um, and then they turned up the valves and water stopped gushing out, which means that it stopped flowing. So whatever the water was doing in those pipes, it stopped doing. You know, which kept the water from getting all over the submarine because the pipes were somehow becoming, you know, bursting or s somehow losing their integrity. Um, but it's like whatever the water had been doing functionally in those pipes, it stopped doing so. You know, was that a loss? Was that something that, was that a bad thing? But that hurt the functionality, functioning of the submarine, not having the water High pressure water in the place, I don't know. So there were, um, you know, lots of submarine movies based on World War II. Made in the, a lot of them were made in the 50s and the 60s. I think uh, the classic 
think Run Silent, Run Deep was a classic. And there were two submarines hunting each other. Okay. And they got into this silent running kind of thing. It's like, because sound travels and they had uh, sonar, active and passive, basically microphones that would pick up sounds. And so if you could hear the other submarine, you, then you knew where it was. And if they couldn't hear you, they didn't know where you were. And you can imagine that, you know, there's a real advantage in knowing where the other submarine is and having the other one not know where you are. So there was always these start this silent running thing. But the classic, the classic, I mean, this is a very fine grain sandpaper. I'm using this to kind of polish out some of the um, scratches from the file. You know, not perfectly, but enough so that it's fairly smooth surface when the paint goes on it. Um, yeah. So it's this classic scene where the two submarines cross over each other. Whether you, the camera's looking down, and I'm totally behind this. Whatever. It's, the camera is looking down on these submarines, and one. I don't know. Here's some submarines. Here are the submarines. And one. This is over the other way right there. As they're running silently, and they just cross over. And those of you who have ever watched Star Trek might recognize that scene. Because the submarine crossing over the other submarine is like a classic. So there might you might there might have been like two starships running silently in a nebula that had shut down most of their sensors. So the only way they could detect each other would be if they made any sounds that could be picked up. Yep. And I think there, that same sort of scene has been repeated many times in other movies as well. But it was definitely used in uh, in the Star Trek. And that's where it came from. A very, very classic scene of the, sub, of the ships passing when, they're, when they had no way of detecting each other. Oh yeah, silent running. So there's run silent, run deep, there's silent running. Um, silence was an important thing in submarining. Was, and it still is. If you can't if you can't detect the sound of the submarine um, in one fashion or another, then you can't detect the submarine. So silence is a big part of even now. That they work very, very hard at to be able to have a submarine move through the water using a propeller which is turning, and as it's turning, it's churning, uh, making like cavitation bubbles and stuff like that. Is attempting to do that without making any sounds. That's why the Red October submarine was. Uh, considered to be a special sort of thing because it didn't have a propeller that was turning doing cavitation or anything like that. It had some sort of like a water pulse engine. And although it made a sound, as we learned from the movie, it did make a sound. It was not recognizable as a submarine because it, and it wasn't recognizable as anything really. It's like, what is that? But when they detected it, and then, you know, change the speed so that it went boom, 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 instead of, oh, you know, slower, faster. Oh, no, that might be the kind of experimental drive that we thought was abandoned years ago. I'm just getting rid of these plastic tabs where the, um, the part was attached to the screw, the, the tree 
for the purpose of the molding of Get it to be, um, you know, totally flush with the other plastic so that it's invisible. So you can't tell it was ever there. There's one of three done. Anyway, uh, yeah, submarines. So that was. That's what the Hunt for Red October was about, was, uh, so that's why, you know, the, um, the North Sea, I can't remember exactly, but the, you know, Russians that are at a real disadvantage in terms of getting their submarines out into the ocean because there's only a couple of routes they can take up from the north. I mean, from the south, you have to go through the Mediterranean Sea. It's very difficult to be secretive there because there's so much ship movement and listening and everything. Uh, and you have to go through the Straits of Gibraltar, and that's pretty small. As we learned in Das Boot, you know, getting through there is perilous. Um, the... Um, yeah, you have to go through the north, and there's only a couple of passages, and those are heavily monitored, so anything moving through there can be detected. But one of the things they're finding out now, and I'm not sure how this will go, is that the um, diesel electric, you know, where you run, when you're running underwater on using electricity, using batteries, now that batteries are, you know, getting more efficient than the old lead-acid batteries, for example, makes for a much quieter ship than uh, than the atomic fission, which is used on this one. You can't stay underwater as long. You have to come up and recharge the batteries by running an engine which requires, a, if, if you stay submerged, at least a snorkel, so there's that. But during the time it's running, become almost undetectable because they're so very, very quiet. The submarines that are designed to maybe be underwater for a few days at a time, as opposed to like forever, which the atomic submarines can do, they usually run about six months, I think, on a patrol. Um, yeah, some of those, the diesel electrics are actually preferred because of, you know, depending on the nature of their, their mission, of their being so quiet, it's a real advantage. Okay, well, at the pace this is going, Looks like I'm going to only have one break, but I am going to do some priming during that break, and some of these pieces will be one-sided. Many of them are two-sided, like what I'm doing here now, um, but the one-sided ones, like this one, and some of these, some of these little bits, that I might be able to uh, to do some painting on later. I should put these where you can see them. One's ready to prime. One's ready to prime. This one was almost ready to prime. This has got these, um, these circles on them all over the place. Okay, you can see them here like that. And then it goes in like this and you'll be able to see those between the, the torpedo tubes. 
and I mean the missile tubes. And I'm, I really hate those things. They're just mold marks, basically. But they're, they're kind of, uh, in this case, they're kind of placed in a way that it looks like they're actually part of, they might be like part of the reinforcing of the deck. So I'm going to leave those, but this one here, this one little one, is uh, just in the middle of nowhere. Get rid of that. Is that in seriously? Okay. I guess I'm not. These are all raised. This particular one is inset. Well, there is a divot in the floor. Um, I really should fill that in. It's really disappointing. The I've complained about this on every stream. Is that the 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 design of this is really pretty cool, but the, the execution of it leaves a lot to be desired. There's mold marks, um, these little circle things everywhere, like this that I've been showing you. Sometimes you can see where the mold, two halves of the mold have come together, and there's a seam a very visible seam down the center of the part that was true of those little bitty chairs. Each of those little bitty chairs, the two halves where the molds came together actually didn't match. They were off by like a 64th of an inch, something, you know, pretty uh, visible. It's that. Weird. Something was stuck to it. You know, this is plagued by all those circles again. Let's see what these are like. They're not too bad. Just a little mark where the uh, where it came from the tree. See if there's any of those circles on it that can really mar these. Yeah, there are on this side. Those all need to come off. Those just, you know, they're, they're obviously not structural, you know, uh, given where they are located. So those all have to come off. And this, this one is plagued by them as well. Oh, here it's not too bad because that's like um, a ballast tank kind of thing underneath, but underneath the very lowest deck. But nonetheless, they are not tiny little hatch. Cool, little bitty hatch up on the top there. But I need to take these off. And mostly, yeah, I should be able to get it, get them pretty well. Let me, let me do the little bits first. These are bits of machinery yeah, of unknown purpose. What we, what I know is that there's a hole in this one and a hole in this one and this pipe goes between them and connects them. What they do, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is like a compressor. That might be, and this is a storage tank. I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna say that that's what it is. I'm sticking with this story. 
at this is a compressor and this is a, an air a compressed air storage tank and the purpose is that these when these missiles get launched they uh, they're pushed up out of the tube just just like the old um, torpedoes were with compressed air and it just air goes underneath them it's compressed it shoots it up and it pushes them to the surface and when they hit the surface some sort of detector says oh i'm not in the water anymore let's start my rocket engine and then the rocket engine starts and then they get and they shoot carrying their deadly thermonuclear overhead to their target yay get these prepped because um they're the kind of they're the kind of little bit of thing that i can actually paint later if they are um, Use the compressor that compresses the air and pumps it into this tank and then that tank is responsible for pushing the missile to the surface where it goes off to its target now, the missiles on this submarine were the early polaris missiles which were the first submarine launched ballistic missiles they were intermediate range because submarines could sneak up and be close to their targets like an intercontinental ballistic missile which would fly through the atmosphere and into space for a fairly long time um, these were considered particularly dangerous because the warning time between the detection of the launch and the detonation of the warhead was short compared to an icbm and that was part of the terror of the deterrence of the submarine launch missile and unlike ground launched missiles where you've got a silo and it's pretty obvious where it is you can't really hide them very well um, submarines were at the time and maybe still fairly undetectable this is the uh dangerous of the nuclear triad the submarine launched ballistic missiles the Pos the polaris's carried one warhead so the submarine had 16 warheads on it each of which was capable of obliterating a medium-sized city yay and they were replaced later by uh trident missiles i believe poseidons came and then and then after that tridents and those had multiple warheads and i think the tridents they're fairly small missiles carried three warheads at least at the time and um so they could obliterate um 48 medium-sized cities okay this is the hatch that goes over the um it goes here like this This is the one that actually opens and closes here. It's supposed to be able to somehow open this. It sits at the top of that tube that has a uh, the tube kind of holds that in and sits on top of the tube that has the spring loaded missile on it. So it kind of opens and closes like that. As you can see, you know the fit it does not fit that well that's just part of the charm of the manufacturing of this beast ready this lever this is the thing that holds the spring together oh, it can just be as it is and you can see this pipe 
this pipe is really a mess. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of flashing on there that just needs to come off. And then the whole thing needs to be kind of sanded so that the mold seam, the seam goes right down the center of the pipe and is obvious. But this how it has to come off without, in fact, snapping the pipe. You've seen me working on the mini figs that we print on our rosin printer. That plastic that is used is pretty brittle. So I've uh, managed to break pieces off now and then, like swords especially. I get to spend some time making new swords out of uh, toothpicks. This, this plastic isn't quite as brittle, but nonetheless is, um, yeah, I don't want to snap it. You know, when I get this, these, this flashing, this really thin layer, thin layer of plastic that's on there because the mold didn't quite come together tight. So plastic oozed out between the two halves of the mold and created that. thin layer of plastic that does not belong to the part. Right. So the... The floor... The bottom of the deck that is actually the ceiling of the deck below it is drying fairly well it looks okay none of this is really it's not competition display model ready but it's it's not bad the whole model is turning out to be adequate okay that seems to be drying and I just need to do a little bit of touch up on that periscope and then by the time I'm done with those little bits of things, um, it'll be break time and I'm going to go up and prime some of this stuff. And then when I come back from break, I will be attempting to assemble with some trepidation knowing that it can be done and must be done. It must be done in order to keep any kind of uh, progress going on this submarine. Although maybe I could, I could just have a whole box full of painted parts you know, that were never assembled, but that would, that would be wrong. And famous words, that would be wrong. Be wrong to not assemble these these decks where's the round one that's the one i don't have the round file that seems to be magnetic i need to get into the crook of this pipe here bend of the pipe This really, this piece was really badly done. I mean, seriously, the mold, the mold was not together. And so the whole thing is just distorted. Quite the worst part. I think the worst parts were actually the tiny little chairs where the two halves didn't match together. And then, since they, they were in fact the size of a grain of rice, I talked about that, they're actually smaller than a grain of rice. Um, it 
yeah, it was hard to hold on to them and get that file down. This one's awkward. Yeah, so it's a little bit harder to... Starting to come on. If you remember what it looked like when I started, there, a camera. All that flashing that was around it is now gone. And uh, the seam isn't that obvious anymore. This is where it was attached to the tree. So that bit needs to be filed on. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I have to, it has to get done. I need to get rid of these circular marks that are on these uh, bulkheads. Because those will show when it's all put together. And it will just look like, why are those, those circles there? And the answer is, well, because it's made out of plastic. And for some reason, the molds had these little circles. And they, they didn't exist in the submarine. Fortunately, these are raised circles so that they can just be filed off. There was this one here that needs to be filled in. Hi, it's one of our cats. Come to say hello. I don't know, maybe he'll jump up and join us. And usually, usually it's our other cat, our larger, older cat, that comes down to say hello. A lot of this is, you can't really, can't see it that well, so I rub it with my finger or thumb. And I can tell if it's smooth or not. We see it, but you can feel it that the two parts, the, this was molded, and the two parts left um, a seam along it that isn't too obvious before, before it's painted, but would become very obvious after it was painted. Yeah, this tiny little pipe. So that's why this one of the reasons why this summary is taking so long is that the parts just don't go together. I mean, they just don't fit very well. They have mold flaws that need to be cleaned up. So I could, you know, end up spending 15 minutes getting this pipe so that it looks like a pipe as opposed to just a blob of plastic. So there's a bulge there. I don't know why. That would be interesting. I'm just interested to see if in fact these pieces, it will actually fit. The way this goes in is it's kind of like this, and maybe like this. And then this is supposed to go in here. Sort of does. And then this pipe connects here. A 
doesn't really fit. B if, uh, if it ends up being horizontal or not. Anyway, they go together like that. And then this, this end does not fit in the hole in the tank, the compressed air tank. That's what I'm calling it. The thing that holds the air from the compressor that boosts the missile up to the surface. These submarines don't, it's not, they don't, they're not really deep when they launch the submarines. I think they need to come up. I mean, it's not shallow, but at like 60 feet from the surface, maybe. I remember hearing that ages ago. I don't know what it is now with the Tridents and the latest generation of submarines, because this was built almost 60 years ago. I mean, that's a long time ago. But they can launch them from, they don't have to surface to launch them, and that was the advantage. But, you know, once it's launched, it's pretty obvious where the submarine was because there's this big plume of water and uh, exhaust from the rocket and everything. So I guess the idea would be, you know, launch your missile, dive and run away. Okay. So these parts are ready to prime. These parts are ready to prime. And then these, I've got these, these circles. They're really obvious because they're raised and they're very artificial. Uh, those need to come off. And so that's what I will do next is uh, file those and get the surface fairly smooth. After I'm done with these, and there are many of them, there's five on this one and one, two, three, four, five on this one as well. It'll be time for a break. Yeah, take a break, maybe get a little bit of a snack to get some blood sugar, you know, so I don't like, doze off or something during the next section. And then, well, I need to do the inevitable. I will yeah, start assembling. Those, all those pieces that you've been seeing in the box there for the last many, many months that I've been painting and detailing and everything else, uh, getting those to go into the hull of the submarine. And it, if it works, it'll be a, it'll be really cool because then the whole basically the the crew occupied section of the submarine. And control room and a galley and the bunk areas and stuff be done. And I can move on to this compartment, which is where the missiles go, which is the point of which is the whole point of this submarine, which is to carry these missiles near to where. You want them to land and basically be a threat. An undetectable 16 city destroying threat. Yeah, that's why it's here. So as I said, I've, I've test fit all of those parts before. Sometimes bits at a time, never all together. getting them into the hull. I don't know. I mean, it, I might find that some things just don't fit again. Hopefully they, they will, or if they don't, I can fix them pretty quickly and easily. There's tricky bits like the staircases that need to be lined up. And then the really tricky bit, which are the periscope and radio antenna tubes. 
which turned out to be quite a challenge, quite a huge challenge, actually. kind of like a little wedge on here. If I keep it flat, it helps to kind of just scrape it off, which is which is okay. And then I'm going to get the fine sandpaper out and polish it a little bit because this is leaving some fairly deep scratch marks, especially up here where I was, where I had it upside down compared to the way I wanted it. About this. At some point, when I test fit this, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's this control panel on this side, and on this side, there's just a big hole. And what I don't know, and it's probably the case because that's just how this whole thing is built, is whether this big hole will show or not. going in this way be looking at it from the side and I'm guessing that unless there's something in front of this and I don't know if there is or isn't that this whole thing might have to be filled in so it doesn't look really gross you know like why is there a giant hole in the bulkhead of the submarine I don't know because it's a plastic bottle And they didn't think about how it would look when they uh, when they molded it. And this way, so this is the part. This corner here is the one that shows the most. So I want to spend a little time polishing that one. I scraped that one pretty well with the file. After the break, I'm gonna have to see, you know, what can I do? What can I do to procrastinate even further before uh, trying doing the assembly on this submarine? I don't know. I'm running out of running out of procrastinations. But the good part, like I said very early on, is that um, these these parts are not cemented in place. They're just held in place by friction, essentially. And so if something isn't fitting, you know, if it's just really not working at all, I can take it out and make some minor modifications and um, eventually, hopefully, get it to work, get it to fit. Okay. So there's kind of a... Yeah, it's not... But it's way in the back. It's going to be virtually invisible there. I kind of um, scraped up the plastic, maybe a little too much with the file. I have to get the, the sanding dust off of these before I prime them. Okay, so this one's ready. And then I just need to get these off of here. thing that way. And that worked pretty well once I got it set right because it kind of just scrapes it off without without marring the plastic around it very much. 
Yeah, I mean that was that was much better. This one, this is the most important one here. It shows right at the very front of the observable part of the submarine. This is going to be an interesting bulkhead to paint. See you in a minute. After I clear these off. circular mold flaws. There are probably master modelers out there who are looking at what I'm doing and they're going, oh my God, this guy has no clue what he's doing. Well, that's probably true, um, but, you know, what can you say? You know, I know what I know, um, but when I built this model originally, it's not the same model, okay? I mean, it was a different model, but when I first built a model, when it first came out back in the 1960s, when I was probably in seventh or eighth grade. I didn't do any of this. I didn't remove any of these weird, I didn't even notice that these weird little circles and stuff were here. It was like, oh, I just want to build this. And so I didn't do a whole lot of painting up, as I recall. And what I did probably wasn't very good. The painting instructions are pretty minimal. So I was able to build this whole model pretty quickly because, you know, all I did was uh, cement pieces together and then didn't bother painting them. And if they didn't fit, you know, the cement melted the plastic, it dissolves it basically. And so things that didn't fit ended up fitting because you just dissolve the plastic and mush them together. That was, that worked. This is taking a whole lot longer this time. But I want to show you this bulkhead because it's really, there's a lot of cool stuff on it, really. Place that we will never see. Anyway, this is fairly clean. Um, this will be a little bit of a challenge because there's this little hatchway way up at the top on this side and it opens you can see it on both sides hatchway way up at the top at the top of a ladder so as i've noted before i paint the base color of the bulkhead all around it including on the ladder and then take that little fine felt tip pen and touch it all along the ladder so you could actually then see the rungs um, but the thing I like best is that this has this tool set here. Okay. And there's a like a wrench and a hammer and some pliers and some wire cutters. And there's a hacksaw up here. And even though they'll be, you know, you'll be looking at it from the side like this and you might barely be able to see it. I'm going to, I'm going to spend like two or three months painting these, uh, these little tools on here. You know, like the hacksaw, the blade will be metal, of course, but the back of it will probably be black or even yellow. And the hammer, the handle will be one color and then the head another. Um, then it's held on by little straps. Okay. And those get to be different colors. So that's all going to be, uh, that's going to be just great fun trying to paint that all together. All right. Um, well, there's a file. This is a mess here. 
These parts are now sanded and filed and ready to be primed. I'm actually going to take them up with me during break and get a coat of primer on one side of the two-sided ones. Okay, and one side of the one-sided ones, and there are just a couple. This and the bits of the air compressor and tank that um, could actually be painted later, potentially, maybe. These tubes all need to be cemented together, and after they're cemented, then they need to be uh, filled in and sanded so that you can't see the seams, which will be inevitably visible. I just put all this together like this. Set it aside here where I hopefully won't knock it over. But first, if you might recall, my effort to fix this ended up in failing to fix part of it. And so right there on that very little tippy corner I need to done and I'm not going to mess with it because I know from experience that every time I say just one more little thing to make it perfect it turns out to not be that way all right um, let me show you this again this I'm coming back to this after break This will be dry by then. It's not quite dry yet, but it's getting really close. There's three of these tubes. I'll just set them here. These parts, see, that's, that's the fancy part with all the stuff on it. These parts go into the hull of the submarine. They need to fit together somehow. Staircases need to go into like this little hole here. You can see it up in the corner. I'll hold it up here. Okay. Like this staircase needs to be inserted and cemented so it holds onto the bottom, but the top of it somehow, the top of it somehow needs to line up with that hatch in the deck above it. So part of what we'll be doing, what I'll be doing is uh, using a contact cement, maybe even rubber cement. I'm almost tempted to use rubber cement just to hold the bottom of that in place while this all gets put together and then somehow comes up. Through there, I don't know, we'll see. Theoretically, one was supposed to be able to cement this into place at some sort of angle, and it would just match up like magic. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Hi, old Brogger. Thanks for dropping in, even for a, bright, a brief period of time. Say hi. Um, yeah, later today, um, all these pieces, all these pieces, hopefully will be installed into the hull of the submarine. They're, they're ready to go. Um, and then the forward third, the whole crew quarters area of the submarine will be completed. And uh, there's just a, I mean, there's a, this, the staircase is just gonna drive me crazy. I don't, you know, it's somehow supposed to line up with the opening in the floor of the deck above it. And there's, like the likelihood of that happening is zero. Well, yeah, you might come back. You'll be back just in time. It'll take like about 30, 30, 40 minutes. If you get back in about an hour, um, I should be just at the point where I am swearing, where I will be making rude comments about how 
I can't get this staircase to work. I have no idea what they were thinking when they put this into the model. Yeah, and then, um, then shortly after that, I'll be inserting the control room in and finding out that these bulkheads don't fit into the, the, the hull anymore and need to be modified somehow. So it'll be coming in and out, in and out, in and out. And once I get it to settle in, hopefully once and for all, then I need to get those tubes in there and get them to line up. And I'll be using, I'm not going to use model cement because that'll just be too messy because they're going to be sliding all over the place. Is again, I might end up just using like rubber cement just to hold the base in place. Um, usually that's enough, you know, just to hold the base in place as the tubes slide up and down. Or maybe contact cement, which does get them a little bit of flexibility. So I am going to. Uh, yeah, I know it's kind of weird seeing all these parts together instead of scattered all over the place. They're in places. It'll look even weirder once it's in the hull. I mean, I will guarantee it will look very, very odd seeing all of these things not scattered around. But it should be uh, it should be interesting and it will go really well or it will go not really well. I don't know. Find out. Uh, break time. I will be back uh, somewhere around 12.30 to 12.40, depending on how the priming going, how having a snack goes, and how brave I feel about assembly. So, we'll see you in a bit.
Well, almost back. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so, what I need to do, I think, is pull this up a little. There we go. And um, I guess it's time to try to <clears throat> get this thing put together. Um, we're going to see how it goes. It's under here. It's now dry. Uh, take off this tape and see if I need to do touching up. Uh, there's a possibility that I might have to do a little touch up with this sort of orangish colored paint depending on uh, whether it got onto the inside of this staircase or not. Looks, so far it looks okay. <clears throat> yeah, it worked. You know, this will do. <clears throat> so, keep my work surface sort of clean. What I need and I don't have are some good toothpicks. I mean, I have toothpicks inside these tubes. I guess I can use them. I don't need them on there anymore because the tubes are ready to be tubes. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Is um, all those parts, all those pieces there, need to go in here, starting from the bottom up, and something is kind of long. <coughs> here I am dropping stuff, trying to get it out of the way. Keep your work surface uncluttered. That's the rule. So for those of you who watch this as a way to find out what not to do, part of what you're seeing here is that, and that what you not do is keep your work surface cluttered. Anyway, uh, yeah, so all of this stuff here needs to go in here. And I need to do that without breaking anything or messing anything up. Um, so, sort of starting at the bottom, this bit here, this is, this is a real catchy thing. Supposedly, these are supposed to be cemented onto the bottoms of this, but I found you can't really do that <clears throat> because, um, it wouldn't line up right. I mean, these need to go in here like this. And what I found when I was test fitting all of this stuff is that it, if they had been cemented in, um, it would have rotated badly, you know, been in a, in a bad ro rotation place, or the, uh, they, these would not have been like at 90 degree angles and would not have fit into the slots on the deck above. So the first challenge is to get this thing. This thing has to be in place. I've done this a couple of times before, and it's just, it's just, it doesn't behave. You know, I'll just say that it just doesn't behave. These things just barely fit here. They have to be rotated just right, which isn't always easy to do. Um, and then this thing, see these slots on the bottom? Those fit onto the tops of those. <clears throat> but first, there's always a but first. Okay, but first, um, I need to get the staircase attached, sort of. I'm going to take my glasses off because they don't focus well. Try to focus, don't focus well. <clears throat> so none of these pieces just really fit well. Okay. And if, and I can't cement them into place because then I can't manipulate them very well. What I do know is that if I get them into place, they hold 
they hold pretty steadily. That is to say, they don't move around very much. Because there's there's just no place to move. So it kind of needs to go like that. But there's... Yeah. I need to um, get the staircase sort of attached and then aligned with the deck above it after I get the deck above it put into place. So I'm going to use contact cement <clears throat> rather than modeling cement because uh, it gives me... It, it doesn't mar the surface quite as much, okay, <laughs> as uh, the other cement does. And it, it also lets me move things around a little bit. Okay, well, it's glopping out in a way that's not helpful. I want to put just a touch of it down here on the bottom of, of this on the little peg, okay? And then a uh, touch of it in the hole where the peg goes. And then this stuff can dry. It's fine if it dries. Um, in fact, that's how it works best. Once it's dry, the two things touch each other and they stick. It's, it's called contact cement. It holds onto the thing that you're cementing, but it really holds onto itself really well. Oh. <coughs> Yuck. You need a tissue. Well, this is going to become a tissue. <laughs> Excuse me. I've done this like four times already, getting these pieces in, and it sort of works, but it's just, it's really a pain, it's really a pain. So these need to go in here. There. <laughs> need to attach this. Let's see how this goes. I mean, it does hold, and it is flexible, so that's, that's part of the trick. And then... These, I somehow need to grab these. Yeah, you can just see me having fun doing this, right? There. All these pieces need to fit together like that. The staircase comes up through there. And then this whole thing, without... ...needs to go... Hmm. ...in like... that and stay put okay it needs to stay put mm -hmm. the staircase is okay that's good staircase is good there stay there <clears throat> and then this it's onto this and goes into this divot here And if it goes in the right place, it should hold really tightly. There. All right. Um, that is not bad. That's actually good so far. Okay. All those pieces are, like, in place. And then this... It just slides in here. 
stick this in before everything gets way too tight. With the gyro room, <clears throat> it just slides in there and that's held in place as well. And Okay, I guess that's that's about as good as it's going to be. So you can see see how that how that fits. How that all goes together. There is a little piece of uh, radiator that will end up going here, and it kind of closes that up. I see that there's a little maybe a need for some touch-up paint, um, depending on how this ends up actually finally rotating. It needs to rotate a little bit um, when the next deck goes on above it. What I'm looking at is at the back of it, it needs to just rotate toward me a little bit, the whole thing, so that it fits. Okay, now this, this supposed to, this is supposed to just slide in there right over the top of all of this. The portal's turning away. Ah! Seriously, there we go. It's going in. Take this piece out. I don't want to do that. I'll have to go back later. Yeah, it all got messed up. It all messed up. Ah! Because it didn't slide in because the toilets are in the way. The toilets are in the way of the uh yeah and i can't put this in yet i have to ah. okay well it all came apart yay so i get to start over lovely okay um what happened was that this deck okay goes in here but these bulkheads that little bulkhead uh got in the way of the toilets got in the way of it and so i wasn't able to put it in the way i wanted to so now all these parts are here. Again, all departed, unparted. The famous uh, staircase needs to go through that opening and here and here. Something needs... Okay, we'll try this again. It was going well until I tried to do something that I couldn't do yet. It was out of sequence. Tolerances and clearances are really, really small. There's not much, not much to what one can do about them, um, other than hope that they fit. And this is fitting. Now I need to not mess with that for a minute. And I need to do this thing that I forgot to do, which is put on the next staircase. Stay together. Um, on this particular submarine, 
they all have a tragic backstory. Actually, being assigned to this submarine, not the original one. I mean, if you were really on the first George Washington, that was a real prestige thing. Okay, it really was to be assigned to that. But if you were one of the tiny little plastic guys that was assigned to this, that that was a sufficient tragic backstory in and of itself. of these parts stay put until they're all in place but they can't be put in place until you know places get this out of the way I don't need that right now and this this I do need but not at the moment and this well I'll put that in later This staircase. Be there. Weezers, hold on to this. Staircase is supposed to be resting on. Yeah, it's like that doesn't line up with this. Seriously, it doesn't. There. That's where that's supposed to be. And it's actually setting, setting pretty well. Wow. I have no idea how this is supposed to happen. How do you get that staircase? This, it, you can't do it. It can't be done. Okay, that has to go in. It is, it's going to have to go in after that deck is put in. And this is supposed to fit, which it doesn't quite do. Yeah, that was kind of what I was afraid of. This. these pieces that are supposed to fit together and sort of but don't quite yeah what's happening here it's a little bit of afraid of that is that these bulkheads don't quite fit where they should anymore. It's like they're too tall. Is it a rotational issue? In particular, this one. I mean, it looks like it's fitting, but it's not. There's a gap here. And if I push, I push this forward. Oh, there we go. OK. 
Okay, I can push that forward. And that snaps into place. Okay, these all look... These all look like they're sort of, but not quite fitting. This one isn't fitting. What just fell? I just lost a chair. Shit. A little chair right there came off. I bumped it. Okay, this is this is all now. I mean, it's locked into place. It's not going anywhere. And now this supposedly line up and hold these decks on this side in place. I need to get that staircase in there and it it can only go in from the top. It's the only way it's going to work. And you can see the staircase, so I need to get it in there somehow. As you recall, I had it in place, but then the deck wouldn't go in. I couldn't put the deck in. Oh, okay, well, that's another issue that needs to be addressed. So it goes in through here. just stay. Now what happened is that this deck, this deck was now, these decks are now distorted. These had been in place for some time. Yeah, pushing things together just made them... Ah, okay, so what happened here, and this isn't necessarily a good thing, Okay, that's okay. Just rotate this. I think that'll be okay. There's a distortion here on this escape hatch, okay? That that happened because this deck, you know, it's a, this deck hasn't moved. I don't know what the problem is. This deck needs to be secured. Okay, these still work. And I need to get, before I do much of else, I need to get some green paint back in here. You can see there's a problem with that. These decks seem to be... be... Okay, let's see if I can get this in. If I can get this in, then I'm going to hunt for that chair. I can find the chair. Then that will be a good thing because that chair needs to be cement it back into place. Snapped into place. That was good. That was a good snap. Okay. That staircase is there. This staircase is there. That chair fell. It's this tiny itsy bitsy little green thing that is going to be a real pain to find and then the last bit is I need to get this inserted there and that slid into place these these pieces are okay um there look <clears throat> things are things are where they should be now the the last challenge is to get the the, uh, the tubes in 
you have these slide into. Okay. And that that that's going to be a challenge, <clears throat> but I'm going to um, take a real quick break. Need to be up pretty high because I need to I need to clean the work surface here. And I need to find that chair. And then before I tackle the tubes, which are going to be quite a challenge, um, I want to touch up some paint. Okay. <clears throat> I need to get a little brush and very carefully get green paint way back in that corner where it's not painted. The bulkhead doesn't fit exceptionally well, but it will look better um once the paint matches but <clears throat> i really would like to find that chair i can replace it i have replacement chairs but <clears throat> i would just assume not it's this tiny little exciting it is really it is a very exciting thing because that chair would have been a real pain to replace. <clears throat> okay, so let me show you what needs to happen here next. Um, these tubes, and I'll just use this one as an example. And hopefully it still works in terms of height. Yeah, need to slide in this groove here and then uh, line up like that with these going down inside of them. So that one, for example, um, if I had some cement on the bottom there, or even rubber cement or anything, would have uh, been just right. And as you can see, there is a downside in that uh, using these scratches the paint, and then I'm going to have to do some little touching up just on the forward surface of all of them. But first, um, I need to fix that green paint. Oh, man. <clears throat> well, anyway, you can see how this is going together here. Okay. I'm going to cover up. It looks like there's some dark gray scratches. This this thing needs to be cemented onto this here. Now I need to sand that too. So this little bit here will be a little bit later. Um, green, light green, light green. There it is. I'm going to have to be quite careful with this because um, I don't want to get it on like the instrument panel and stuff. Eventually all these edges, these edges that you see here, um, those get painted this dark gray color, which is the hull cutaway color. And that has to be done with great care because I don't want to get it on anything else. And I'd say this is, considering how badly this thing was molded to begin with and how much work it took to get the parts done. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird, isn't it? Look at that. All of that little, you can even still see the pots and pans back there in the galley. See them hanging there, yeah, and the and the red striping on the stoves and uh, all the dials and stuff on the control panels. I have to say I am kind of shocked, really, kind of shocked that uh, that this. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Something yet will happen bad. That's what I'm going to say. Something will have to happen yet. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Let me get these tools out of the way. And I need to mix this green paint. And I'm going to use one of these brushes that has a very long, very long point on it and just get paint on the tip of it. Oh, the Porco Rosso plane. Actually, that would be pretty cool thing to do for relaxing painting. Um, because, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people who Dungeons and Dragons uh, are fans of um, the Miyazaki Studios. And Porco Rosso is one of his best. It really is. So I had, they bought me, they bought for me a one, all of models that I like to do are 148th scale. You wouldn't know that because I haven't done any. But the ones I purchased at least are 148th scale. And they, Nikki and Alexis, who are parts, important parts of Dyson Dungeons, very important parts of Dyson Dungeons, bought for me a 148th scale Savoya biplane, which is Porco Rosso's plane. The thing about it, though, is that it's... Um, glossy. See red. Really hard to paint with gloss paints. Okay, this is getting it down here next to the instrument panel. It needs to be green, green. Yeah, that's a good brush. Good brush. Got behind it. So it looks a different color, but when that dries, it will match. Looking around to see if there are other... Some of these little spots are just dust spots. There's a lot of dust on this. These parts, as long as as long as nothing now is allowed to move ever again, things are in their place. There's one spot here of dark gray. Most of this dark gray, if there's if there's touch-up needed, can be touched up when I do the edges. But there's this one spot here, there, where the paint is scraped a little bit. Once this is put on, excuse me. Once this is put on, I'm not, you know, yeah, actually I should be able to reach it. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, okay, so for this to be cemented on, let me just do this first, because it's an easy thing to do, relatively speaking, compared to some of the other stuff. Is I need to scrape away some of the paint on here. This is the place to which it will be attached. because the model cement um, dissolves the paint and makes a mess. Oh, geez, I keep forgetting that part. Um, 
You'll have to excuse me, but there is a, a bit that I need to do before I put this on. Let's finish cleaning this off. I know you might say, well, why did you not put paint on there in the first place? But sometimes it's uh, in order to get the paint right, you just have to do it in that order. Here, down here, there was um, a break. When this got snapped off, it put a divot into the hull. And that needs to be sanded. Smooth and even before I put on that piece because it would be very difficult to sand it after it's on. Yeah, that's good. Let's have things fall off. I really should have done this before I put that all in there because now I'm getting sanding dust from the filler all over everything. Yeah. Yeah, now you're going to get to watch me try to clean up all that sanding dust that I'm doing that I should have done this like a week, weeks ago, but I didn't, right? Because no reason at all other than I didn't. And then I'm going to get a, uh, and still, that's the problem. Sometimes this filler will just, like, leave a, a void. And there's a tiny little void there that I'm going to have to fill in yet more. Um, do that you know it's the bottom no one's gonna see that I can say that safely stuff right here is I just toss it on the floor and then um, I need to scrape a little of this paint off here too from the back All right, um, so the way this should work is that this will just go there, like that, right? the model cement on this. Just want the tiny, the tiny dot there. Tiny dot. Oh, that's good. Just put it right there. 
and I, I almost knocked it over and it would have dissolved the hull. That would have been cool, huh? Could have watched the hull of the submarine dissolve in front of your very eyes. <clears throat> and then cap this up quickly, knock over some other paint, get it out of the way, take my piece of stuff here. and then get it into place. There, and that, that will hold. These are supposed to be batteries. Out at the very, very bottom here. Yep. Hopefully they are not like lithium-ion batteries that will see how that color changed. That was good. Okay, so the periscope can go back in. Hopefully it will go through all these little holes. Ah, so much dust. Just, just making a mess of things everywhere. All these decks are just all covered with dirt now. We need a good swabber. Come in and swab these decks. Okay, um, the last bit that needs to be done here, how is the time going? Oh, good, good timing, is getting these guys in, in place and lined up with these. And I was thinking of using contact cement. I, I need to hold the bottom, the bottoms in place. The tubes will keep them aligned. I mean, these, these things. Here, we'll keep them aligned. Um, but uh, the bottom needs to be held. And the contact cement might work pretty well because it has some give to it. But uh, I'm going to, I'm actually thinking if this is still good. I'm thinking of just using rubber cement because rubber cement will, will provide some hold but it's just so gooey. Yeah. I don't want to use the model cement because if it slides around, it's just going to make a mess there. I am going to. And I'm going to do it this way. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to put a little bit of contact cement on the bottom of the tube. Just do it one at a time as the tubes go into place. And although it doesn't hold as well as when it's contacted to itself, it might be enough. This one has to go the furthest. This one goes here. I really wanted to do is I just wanted to hold on to the bottom. Pick another one. Give it the same treatment. Like I said, a little touch up on these because the paint is getting a little scraped. Yeah, this one has to rotate because there's a flaw in it. Um, let's see if I can do that. There's, there's just a flaw in the, in the plastic itself. And it'll be easier to touch this up 
yeah, I'll have to do some touch up, but that'll that'll just be what I need to do. It's okay if they kind of wiggle around. That contact cement will eventually get solidified a little bit. Get this one. Get this one into place. There's some little things yet. Besides touching up the the paint, okay, which is obvious. I need to put the chair back and there's um, a weird little stool for the periscope. Don't don't screw around with the stool. Seriously, the very last one is going to not. There we go. There we go. All right. So let's see if I can straighten these out. Push them down as far as they go. Obviously, they need some touching up. But they're vertical. Good. Yeah. That's good. This is a good thing so far. Uh, yeah. So, let me cap this up before I start banging it into everything else. Um, I'm going to do the paint touching up right away. I'm just going to go ahead and get that done. And because it'll be done. I used this earlier to do a touch up that needed touching. There it is. I put it very safely away in a place where I couldn't see it. This involves tiny little dots of paint once again. I mean, I'm going to use that brush I used before with the long bristles because it gives me some pretty decent control and um, a reach by just getting paint on the tip of it. But you can see where I need to um, need to touch up where it's been scraped. surface trying to avoid brush marks despite the fact that this has a very soft bristle and shouldn't need very many once it uh, once the paint dries If you recall, I recall, I broke off a tiny little chair. That needs to be replaced. 
you do that now. And I should use the model cement on this also. Um, it would be a little bit risky because I what I like to do is I like to get the cement into the the whole word. Well, I probably can from the top. I'm going to use the toothpick and hopefully get get enough cement on it inside this little this hole here so that I can see why it popped out. The, the hole is just way bigger than the chair. this up before I have a disaster and then uh, it's very tiny get this in there contact with the cement enough to hold, despite the fact that the hole is way oversized. Yeah, so this whole model is going to go to hell because I can't get the chair, chair in. There. And it's turned a little bit. I think that's okay, as long as it's vertical. Except yeah, an oversized hole is not helping. Not helping the process here. Okay. Well, if it stays there, that will be good. Now, now I've got this weird thing. Okay, and this I don't this might take a while. This might take up the better part of what we the time that there's left. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, this thing, this little chair on a pedestal, okay? It's on a pedestal because rather than putting the periscope, you know, at a decent height, right? No. The periscope is put way up there. Way up there. See? I, and so in order to get to it, you need to sit on a hydraulic lift. There. And that chair fell out again. Yay. Okay. Well, I need to work on this because this chair needs to be in place. Um, well... I'm going to go back to my old friend, Contact Cement, because this will fill the hole. thing about this is that it just grabs right away too although it gives you the opportunity to move things around it does hold on to stuff what do is make sure that there's not so much on here that it will bubble up when I push it into the, the hole I don't want it to form um, this is going to get lost for sure.
Okay. Now, I'm not going to get the periscope thing in today, I don't think, because, well, maybe I will. I'll keep trying. I need to get this chair in and have it stay. Just stay put. And that should do it. Okay. Rotated. That makes it look like, you know, there's activity going on. That's good. Okay, so back to this other thing. It goes way inside. It can't go into the place where it was designed to go because that's now covered up by one of the periscope tubes because that's just how it happened when these things got ready to go. Weezers aren't holding it. We go like there somehow. Like right there. It's supposed to go inside sort of like that, but it can't. And so What's going to happen is I'm going to keep flopping it around. Actually, what I would, what I really should try to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to see if I can rotate this. Okay. I'm going to put the chair over here. But that only makes sense if this is rotated in that direction, which it is now. Okay. But I want to do some touch up again with this paint and let me just get it done. Just do it. show you what I was thinking and maybe this will work find out is if I can get it to hold on to the tweezers here okay there and since I've rotated that I can put the periscope chair in the corner here where there's uh, now space because the tubes are pushed that way. So somehow, besides just getting it to not keep popping off of the tweezers, you need to get it to adhere here. in the corner, right there. I guess I'm going to try with the contact cement again. That's, I mean, it, at least it grabs, you know, it, it contacts, contact. So, because I'm putting it behind a little bit of a wall, there's like an insert here. I can get into that corner right there. Some 
on the very bottom of this thing, it might it might stick. And if it sticks, um, that would be a good thing. Because if it sticks, then I can like I've done with I've used this when I've attached toothpick swords before. Um, it will eventually hold pretty well, but initially it gives me an opportunity to do some, you know, dealing with an orient with orientation. Well, this stuff holds to itself really well, but it doesn't always grab onto the thing you're trying to get to stick. worst I can come from this is that uh, actually you just have to start over. This is just the weirdest little thing though. It's like it's on this hydraulic lift. It just goes up and down, right? So if you're going to look through the periscope, you got to sit in this chair and then hit the non-existent lever that supposedly will make it go right, grab it place where I have some, yeah. Who knows? Hopefully this will stick. You know, it's sort of sticking. Hate it. in there. It's not standing up straight. That's the nice thing about this cement is that and it to rotate significantly. come off and go back on because it's not oriented the way I want it oriented like this kind of sideways kind of hold it in a different way see if it's still <sighs> tweezers you're supposed to hold was going to be a challenge, but I didn't expect it to be like the worst thing ever.
expected actually that the um were difficult I should have just left this alone when it was actually holding in place and not awful keep rotating exactly the opposite direction I'm moving it. Just the way this whole thing is built. I don't know, it's just really, really, this is amazingly frustrating. I have to say, I am amazed at how frustrating this is turning out to be. I get it in the right place, but it's just slightly, it's rotated in a direction I don't want it. And I'm trying to rotate it counterclockwise, and every time I touch it, probably because of just the way the back of the chair is put together um it'll go clockwise and go yet further in the direction i don't want it to go that is in the way Just stick. That's all I'm asking. Is just, just stick here. Stand up. Stay sticking, but stand up. This paint, the touch up isn't staying touched. Okay, um, that's really close to where I want it, and I just need to, I am tempted to move it just a little bit more, and I think I will try. Okay, that's good. Yep, it's getting to the point where I need to stop pretty soon because I am like knocking things over and dropping them. So, um, 
I'm just going to see if I can get this to stand up just a little straighter. So it's more than just like symbolically located. And that, if it stays there, that would be just nice, really nice. Okay, um, there. I'm going to stop messing with it, maybe. But uh, there, it's bang. Uh, that's that's the front third of the submarine. And that's where, as you can see, just a huge amount of stupid detail is located. These are working. You go up and down. These do too. Uh, the tubes don't go all the way down, but uh, they work if you can, if one can grab them. These are like, uh, I don't know, snorkel tubes and stuff. But these will work. A periscope, down periscope. I'm going to leave them down uh, to keep the tubes held in place. That little chair is sticking where it is. That chair is done. And then, except for one thing, one thing, which is so weird, there's this ladder. Okay. And the instructions say that this ladder is supposed to somehow... I have no clue. This this may or may not actually ever get installed. This ladder is the ladder to the escape hatch and needs to go there, right in the middle of everything. Yes, like that. Probably I need to shorten it so that it is more vertical and doesn't interfere with the stairway. That's that somehow needs to be installed. Um, but for now, yeah, that little chair uh, is staying upright. That chair is in. All the pieces are in place. Other than touching up the edges with the dark gray, okay, the cutaway color, and all the edges of all these bulkheads, uh, this this stuff is in place. So this is, uh, yeah. What they they need a stairvator, okay. Yeah, they need to get to the escape hatch somehow. And how else do it other than with a ladder that will go somewhere there once I get it to be the right size. Right in the middle of the control room where, you know, when you try to get from here to here, you have to go around the ladder, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's really going to be in the way. I'd say that that was a bad design, a bad ergonomic design. Is that a spot that needs touching? I hate to do this right near the end, right? I have to take this teeny brush. Paint, but right at the top of the periscope here. spot. It's not spotted anymore. spotted. I bet you can't even see it, but I am seeing it now. I'm going to write. I got two minutes left. Put on the head magnifiers. Let me see if this is actually an illusion, if this is an illusion or not, or whether it really is a... I'm just going to leave it. Some things are best left untouched at this point. 
And usually I do not follow my advice and say, leave it, and then actually leave it. Um, but now I, now I will. So I'm very happy with myself not messing with it. All right. Uh, that was relaxing painting and not very much painting, but a whole lot of putting junk little pieces together into a big piece of a submarine um, with Dyson Dungeons. And what we... What you have seen is the assembly of all of these parts that have been laying around for months now. And if we can look at it here, it includes the control room and all of those controls and dials and buttons and levers and some and uh, a galley. If you can look back in the galley, see the coffee maker and the pots and the pans that are hanging there. Um, the little red edging on the cupboards and cabinets, which is, I think, pretty cool. Torpedoes, those went in early on. The uh, gyro room. And all of this is being held in place by friction, which means that if I were to drop this, it would all pop out again. That would be cool, wouldn't it? It would all pop out and break and who knows what, become a problem. Uh, but for now, it's actually located inside the submarine and I have every intention of leaving it there. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, I think it looks okay. It is not a display model level kind of professional thing, but it looks, it looks pretty decent. I think it turned out all right. And I just need to figure out how to get that ladder in. That's the next part of the instructions, but I'll be moving on to all the parts that have been primed in this section here, this big section here, we'll be carrying 16 deadly Polaris missiles. Uh, that's what's going to be in here, is that this will turn in, this is the, the section of the submarine for which the submarine exists. That is to say, the section of the submarine that carries the 16 missile tubes. And um, I've got some of those primed so I can start painting them next week, Wednesday, no, oh, yeah, there is no stream next week, no streams at all next week, remind you again on Friday, but uh, just because of things, um, maybe travel, maybe something else, you never know, there are no streams next week, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, but uh, a week from Wednesday, hopefully I'll be back, and um, begin, continue working on this whole section here, making the tubes, gluing the tubes together, starting to seal the seams so that you can't see them. Um, yeah, getting the decks done, unbending the one that has a warp, and then uh, taking a tiny little brush with tiny little spots of gray paint, this dark gray paint, and painting the edges of the bulkheads so that they're all this nice dark gray color, which is the color of the cutaway of the inside of the hull. So there it is. There's uh, a whole lot of submarine now put together. And I am now going to set this aside for what may be a good long time before I start putting this stuff into the hull. I might do some fitting along the way, but there's a lot of other work that needs to be done on it before that hand. And now I need to remember that the front of this submarine is much heavier than the back and where it balanced before it doesn't. So, yeah, thanks for watching. This has been Relaxing Painting and Submarine Assembly with Dyson Dungeons. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, most of the time from 10-ish until 2-ish, except uh, not next week, but there, I do plan on... Uh, streaming on Friday and I'll be working on I don't know what finishing the demon bird thing and maybe there's a bunch of other little demons that I start painting little demons and then this will wait for two weeks and then we'll get back to start working on the missile tube section and then after that all the machinery and the reactor core which is kind of a thing that I'll have to play with to make it look all glowy and radioactively and stuff like that Thanks again. Um, if you like what you saw, become a follower, become a uh, sponsor, 
or go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons if you really like it and become a patron not only of relaxing painting but also of our dungeons and dragons campaign which streams with a live chat on sundays three sundays a month eastern ah, really these little white spots that i think are just dirt eastern daylight time Okay, I want to put this away, and yeah, we haven't had a full episode of painting with Di relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons in a very long time. We'll have another one hopefully on Friday, and then uh, the week after next, be back for a bit. Uh, just a lot of traveling and moving around and storms that knock out power and internet and stuff this summer. It's been that kind of thing. Thanks again. Take care.